Okay, so now I've created a fault on this particular line. Now I'm going to use my tools to move in and move in parallel planes to this seismic line, but I want to do it in steps less than 10, uh, 10 line intervals. So I'm going to take this down and I'm going to try to do this uh, probably about two, two traces at a time. So now when I use this arrow or this one, I will be stepping two traces over. So you'll note we're on line 120. I'm going to go to uh, line 118. Now you see I don't see any sort of a pick here, but I do see a fault coming through through this general area. It's not quite as clear as the other one was. I'm now going to come back to the fault interpret uh, icon. I'm going to come down. I'm really confident that uh, this represents a termination of a reflector. So I'm going to click. I'm really certain this is. I'm really pretty confident this is coming through. The stuff above it is not quite so clear, but basically I could sort of stop this somewhere probably, somewhere probably about here. So I've double clicked that and so I then have a fault. I don't really know where to take it below and I'm not sure where to take it above. So I'm just going to leave it that, that length. Now I can come up here again and I can press this to go to 116. Again, now I have to look and find my fault. Here's a good indicator of that fault up at the top. This is certainly a good indicator of the fault coming down. And here it gets a little flaky. I mean, this is, this is just dropping off gradually. This seems to terminate here. This seems to terminate down here. So I'm not really sure what to do up here in this particular location. There may be some complexity of some faults going, little or faults going in different directions. But for the moment, I'm just going to double click here and view that as the portion. Now I'm going to keep doing this a couple more times so that we can see I'm at 114. I'm going to come up here and, and pick and pick. You know, I could probably feed this down this way. However, this is beginning to look a little more desirable as I come this way. I have a termination here, a termination here, a termination here something down here in this red thing dropping off. So just for the moment, I'm probably going to take that as the direction. Remember, we may not be in a normal uh, perpendicular direction exactly to this fault. So some of these bends, it's also possible that there's some amount of fault right over here, a smaller one that seems to be coming up and intersecting with this. But I'm going to go with that one for the moment. Now I'm going to come across and do maybe one more of these. Here I'm going to come up here. I've still got, I've got some offset in this, so I'm going to bring that up to there, down into there, down into there. Again, this thing is really frustrating because I don't know quite where to go with it. Uh, I'm tempted to go this way because there's a, there's a change in amplitude here. There's also a change in amplitude here. Um, so not really quite sure where to go. I'm just going to try this for this sort of thing coming the opposite way. Okay, now that I've done this, one of the things I can do is to go back and to look at what this looks like in the three-dimensional direction. I want to try to uh, get this window to come across, give us a little less space. And now I go up here and turn on the fault interpretation. And what we can see is that we've got now the plane of this fault. And we can, obviously, I've, I've probably got some things that are a little screwed up down there at the bottom. I would have to clean up. Everything at the top looks pretty good in this case. I could also come and interpret this fault going in this direction, 122, 124, etc. But you get the idea of what we're doing. If I bring in the uh, this, I'm going to go to this icon that allows me to move a plane or manipulate a plane. And I'm going to come up and sort of put this through the um, through this fault, this uh, through the fault at the, with the time slice, and I'm then going to be able to take a look at whether there's anything here that looks like it might be consistent with this fault. 
Well, sure enough, look at the look at the fault we've got moving along here. It's moving and intersecting this particular time slice right at a point that looks very funny in terms of the uh, the time slice. So this would be a place where you'd be very suspicious that a fault would exist. The direction we were working was the first one here going that way, and indeed when we get here it looks like something else is happening. Okay, There's not this clear boundary. However, there does appear to be a fault that's coming along and coming and perhaps all the way to here, maybe even to here. So we would then go and build, continue to build this fault as we come this direction. And the time slice would give us a good indicator that we're exactly on a, a, a direction in which there is clearly a, uh, clearly a fault here. Uh, the fault in this case is a normal fault. We know that because the fault is, uh, uh, is down on this side from this side. And that the and that so therefore it is moving down down the slope here. So this would on the right of this display would be the foot wall. On this side would be the hanging wall, and this would be a normal fault uh, based on what we've what we've picked here. So you've had a chance now to uh, look at uh, these, seen how to pick the faults, and then how to uh, how to make corrections in the faults. We could go back to some of those earlier places where we made picks, go to the same, uh, the same cross line position, and we would then have the ability to go in and correct or change picks if we think we see some things that are, that are out, of, uh, out, of, out of alignment. But you can see the blue sort of uh, transparent plane here is what the, what the program produces given the picks or uh, these, these sequences of points along uh, along sticks, our so-called fault sticks, and this is how it goes about creating a fault, pl a, general, a roughly planar surface out of the picks that you have. So the so this gives us a good chance. If we go back here just for a moment to the interpretation window, if we were to go and move, say, to uh, to one eleven in between the two that we've picked. Um, didn't do what I thought it would do. Let's, uh, well, let's go, let's go back to some of the area that's, that's pretty reasonable. The fault was doing funny things there at the end in my picks. But if you are on a, a, a line, a cross line in this case, in which you picked on either side of it or at some distance, it's going to interpolate, and that's what this, this translucent blue pane is, is showing where the picks would be as it, as it uh, triangulated between the values on either side. So if this were not very good or you didn't think it corresponded, one could then go in here and make specific picks for this particular uh, line, in this case 117. But if we go to 118, we see then we have the actual picks that were made and this would have been one of the ones that was used to interpolate for cross line 117. So remember that always when you finish something like this you want to go in and you want to do a uh, you want to do a save on that particular process uh, because you don't want to lose what you've gotten here if something uh, if something goes wrong. So always take care to back up things uh, and I'll show you some other ways to do that in a, another video coming up. Okay, so this is basically what you want to do. First, really look carefully through the data. Make notes about where you see faults, the, the inline and the cross line, and if it's relevant, even the time slice where you saw something particularly interesting. Then you're going to find a way to get to an interpret build an interpretation window that's the best way to look at that particular fault and how it changes laterally and then finally uh, go about picking that and then looking at it and look at it in all sorts of views maybe the view differently in other words we looked at this particular um, fault in terms of the time slice we didn't use it directly to pick the fault but we're certainly getting very good agreement in the location of the fault relative to what we see in the, uh, in the time slice. So you can move the time slice up and down. I can go here to the, this picture 
and I can move up and down and we can see various places where we are getting uh, agreement. Uh, this isn't the best way to look at it, but here we are. Our fault is almost always right along some sort of a boundary like this. That's probably the same one we looked at before, but if I can find a good one here. Here's another one where, again, we've got a, a boundary here with terminations coming through and affecting where this fault is located. So that's, uh, that's it for uh, looking at PICs, and uh, we'll come back for some more uh, in another video. Thank you. Bye-bye.